everyone's been going crazy over the Reuters report that they have some leaked information directly from Tesla about the 1 million mile battery that everyone's been so excited about that was supposed to be unveiled during the battery day. But if you look at the details very closely, uh, I'm not quite sure if that's really the case. We'll take a closer look. Also, there is a confirmed report from Electric and now Tesla Roddy that Tesla has finally picked the location of its next factory where they will be making the Cybertrucks. Let's find out who's going to be getting the rows. We will tell you the conclusion of the Elon Musk versus Alameda County standoff. Inside of his contributor, Tom Malogny is going to be here to tell us who blinked first. Also, new rates coming from the fast charging network Electrify America, which will make a lot of people happy. And yet another a gorgeous, gorgeous electric car that's been unveiled, but it's not for you, America. Let's get to this week's electric car news. And if anyone gets arrested, I ask, it will only be me. Oh, I can get arrested for this? Okay, but I still, I still sounded tough, right? Oh, all right. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Let's start with a report from Reuters claiming that they have some leaked information about Tesla's 1 million mile battery. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, 1 million mile battery is not the battery that needs to be charged every 1 million miles. It's the battery that needs to be replaced every 1 million miles. So, uh, unless you're in a very long distance relationship, I'm not sure how useful it's going to be, but I guess it's good to know that the tech is almost there. All right, but all joking aside, the report, the Reuters report claims that Tesla is working with uh, one of their new partners in China, CATL, on this new battery. Now, the biggest deal here is that the cost per kilowatt hour is going to be way below $100. Now, the reason $100 per kilowatt hour is a magic number is because most experts believe that when you hit that price, the electric car of a certain configuration will cost the same or even less than a gas car with the same configuration. And after that, all is gravy and electric cars at some point may cost even less. So that's a big deal. Now, most publications believe that this is indeed the one million mile battery that was supposed to be unveiled at the battery day. But if you look at some of the details and history, you will probably see that this probably is not what we think it is. Here's why I think this is not the 1 million mile battery. Now, first of all, much like most of my Bumble dates, this all comes down to chemistry. You see the battery that Reuters are reporting on, the one that Tesla is developing with CATL, has no cobalt in it at all, where the 1 million mile battery that's supposed to be unveiled at the battery day still has a little bit. Secondly, as you probably know, Tesla has spent many years acquiring companies like Maxwell Technology, hiring amazing researchers, and spending their time and money trying to get their own battery cell tech. And at that time, before they were even in China, they were not planning on developing this with Panasonic, their only partner. So why in the world would they get all of this know-how and then walk it to a Chinese cell manufacturer and share it with them? And as you know, in China, they're not exactly known for keeping the proprietary information secret in the first place. Thirdly, Tesla doesn't really leak information about their presentations. Imagine how many high-profile presentations they've had, including the Roadster unveiling, the Cybertruck unveiling, and yet nobody knew anything until the very moment. This is no different. This is going to be a battery day. Elon is really pumping it up like it's one of the best things that's going to happen to Tesla. So I don't see how they're going to all of a sudden leak this information now to anybody. Lastly, Tesla usually showcases the technology that's about two to three years away, or in the case of Roadster, at least five years away. In this case, it's no different. And Reuters is reporting on something that it looks like going to be in production in the next half a year to 12 months. So this is why I don't think we're talking about the 1 million mile battery. And this is just an interim technology. Now, I shouldn't say just because this is still very impressive. And once again, shows how far Tesla is ahead of their competition. For example, General Motors just announced at the event that they went to Detroit a couple of months ago that they won't be reaching $100 per kilowatt hour milestone until at least 2025 with their partner LG Cam. I should mention that LG Chem is the battery cell provider for most Model 3s that are made in China. However, 18% of those cars still have 
Panasonic batteries. I should mention that Panasonic is seizing their operations at the, the Giga factory in New York as that part of their partnership is now over. All right, before we get to the next controversial Tesla story, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the Tesla community's accessory store. Use E4 Electric, the name of this channel, as a discount code for all of your purchases over $100. Now, here's a story that has finally come to an end. As you remember, in the last episode, <laughs> we, we covered the Elon threatening California to leave for another state, saying this is the last uh, car maker in California, which is really not true because there is obviously Faraday Future and Lucid. They're both going in production in the next year. There's also BYD in Southern California that makes electric buses. But facts aside, Elon threatened, uh, filed a lawsuit, and on Monday decided to just restart the factory anyway saying hey we're doing it and if you want to arrest me go ahead but we're still gonna move forward with this now it all came to a quiet end and a lot of people don't really know what what to make of it but i turn to inside ev's contributor tom malogny all right tom i know you've been following this story for a while um d is it over how did it end well, it kind of ended in a whimper we were thinking it might have ended in a bang but it didn't. In the end, Alameda County blinked, it appears, and allowed Tesla to open up. Uh, it appears without any penalties. And uh, Elon seems like he's got his way this time. And so now they, they allowed the, the, the factory to open on the 18th, but you know Elon opened it a, a, a week earlier. Um, so what is happening in that one week uh, that he's not supposed to be doing this, but he's doing this? Like, what's, what's the status of that? Yeah, so, I mean, I think that's part of what I mean by they blinked. Elon said, you know, we're opening up Monday the 11th, and if you have to arrest anybody, arrest me. I'll be there on the lines. Nobody's been arrested. Uh, and on the next day, on the night of Tuesday the 12th, uh, the Alameda Board of Health said, you know what, Tesla, you can open up fully on Monday the 18th, begin pr producing cars, and in the interim, you can kind of get ready to open up on uh, next Monday. So really, they basically said, do what you want. Uh, we're going to say you're officially not opening till Monday the 18th, but we know you're there now. And, uh, you know, we're not going to do anything about it. Now, I, I know Elon made it very dramatic saying, you know, if you guys are going to come over and arrest anybody, let it let it be me. But uh, does, does Alameda County or any county has a right to actually show up and arrest anybody? Uh, and if not, what penalties can they impose on somebody who's breaking the uh, uh, shelter-in-place order? Well, yeah, I mean, they, the, 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 the Alameda County, I guess the police department, could, could come in, shut them down, and arrest them. It doesn't mean that it's legal for them to do that, but they can do that. Of course, it would be litigated. Elon would contest it, and there'd be lawsuits flying all over the place. Um, but looks like we've averted that and that's not going to happen. All right, Tom, stick around. Uh, I'm going to bring you back for another exciting story uh, later in this video. I should mention that the reason that Alameda County did not want to give uh, the green light for the reopening right away was because the Tesla plan did not have some of the basic things like requiring their employees to wear masks, the temperature checks at the entry and some other very basic requirements. Now, on Wednesday night, Fremont police went into the factory to do what essentially was a health inspection. Now, I don't know why cops are doing the health inspection, something that the county should do, but it looks like it's over. Just in case if you're wondering, some manufacturers have already reopened their factories in the United States. They include Mercedes, BMW, GM, Honda, and some others. Uh, at the same time, Toyota and Fiat Chrysler are planning to do so next week. And Volkswagen has decided to wait a little bit longer, so they don't even have a date on when their factory in the United States will reopen. I will keep you posted. In other Tesla news, it looks like Tesla has finally picked a dance partner for their next factory where they will be making the Cybertruck. Apparently, the building will have very sharp edges. But per Electric and Tesla Roddy, and they're very sure in this, this will be in Austin, Texas. Now, other publications are not as sure, but I think everybody agrees that it is going to be in Texas. Now, here's an interesting part. Elon Musk wants this factory up and running by the end of this year, at least with a general assembly line where they will be taking parts from the Fremont, California factory and assembling them in Texas. 
Now, this is very aggressive. This is way more aggressive than even their Shanghai factory, but we'll see what happens. And of course, as always, I will keep you updated. Electrify America, the second largest fast charging network in the United States after Tesla's supercharging network, is going to change the way they charge for electricity. Now, right now, in some cases, with their current rate structure, it costs as much money to recharge your electric car as it would be to refuel your gas car. Hopefully that's going to change. Now, Tom Malogny, the Inside EVs contributor, got this exclusive story directly from Electrify America CEO. So let's bring him back in and have him get us updated on that developing story. All right, Tom, thanks for sticking around. Now let's talk about Electrify America. You got an exclusive interview with their CEO. So what's going on and what is the change that they're planning? Yeah, I had uh, the opportunity to talk with Electrify America CEO uh, Giovanni Palazzo and uh, learn that uh, the network uh, infrastructure giant is going to be making a big change. They're going to be transitioning from a time-based three-tier charging system to a per kilowatt hour based method to charge their customers. So let's talk about what they got going on right now, which is not only a three-tier system, but also they're charging per minute, regardless of how much energy your car is getting. I know a lot of people were upset about it, mainly because it became very expensive for most of the electric car owners. Yeah, so like EVgo, Electrify America charges by the minute, not by how much energy you get. And, uh, but unlike EVgo, they, Electrify America has a three-tier charging system based on how much energy your car is capable of accepting. Now, the rub that a lot of people have is that it's based on how much the peak charging rate of your EV is. Your car doesn't have to achieve that rate while you, you're charging on their equipment. It just has to be capable of accepting that high rate, and then you pay more per minute. So some people have seen that as not fair. Now, there are um, to be fair, there's a lot of people that use the Electrify America network that do like that type of charging method. However, the state of California doesn't like it. And they ruled that by 2021, all new public level one and level two charging stations have to charge by the kilowatt hour. As, and by 2023, all new DC fast charge, chargers have to charge by the kilowatt hour. Now, existing units have a 10 year grace period to catch up to the new units. However, Electrify America would be in a position where some of their chargers in the state charge by app, by time and some charge by kilowatt hour. That's just unworkable. So they have decided they're gonna transition and they're gonna do it before the 2023 deadline. Electrify America, where they're allowed to, and that means in every state in the country that they're allowed to charge by the kilowatt hour, they're going to transition to that. Now, when you say allowed to, from what I understand, there are some states that are going to mandate that and other states mandate the opposite. Is that, is that right? Sure. Well, so far, only California has mandated that you, you charge by the kilowatt hour. How, however, there, there are 30 states in the country that allow you to charge either way. But there are 20 states that do not allow EV charging networks to charge by the kilowatt hour. In those states, Electrify America will have to continue to use their time-based charging method unless they can lobby the states to allow them to charge by the kilowatt hour. Basically, the rub here is that in those states, the Board of Public Utilities has decided they don't want to allow anyone to resell electricity because there's concerns that there could be uh, gouging and electricity is, 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 a is a necessary commodity. So they, they only the, the public utilities were allowed to sell electricity. Now, Electrify America and other charging networks sell electricity in their states, but the way they get around it is they sell time, not electricity. And that's how the charging stations currently are set up in those states. Now, once Electrify America is going to charge, charge per kilowatt hour rather than per minute, do you think it will benefit consumers as far as pricing, or do you think it will just make it fair? So I think um, some people will benefit, some people won't. Just like right now, the time-based system, 
some electric car owners, depending on the charging curve that their vehicle can accept, some actually pay much less than what other uh, electric car owners char pay to charge their car. So uh, there is no perfect system, to be honest with you. Um, but I think that if they do this right, a kilowatt hour base system, and, and uh, I'm thinking maybe ideally it will have two tiers. They, ha they didn't tell me how they're exactly going to do this. But in my mind, it would be most fair as if they charged a certain amount of money for uh, zero to, say, 75% charged in the car, and then a little bit more when the car is charging between 75% and 100%. Because at, at those high state of charge rates, the, the charging station slows down. The car takes more time to charge. And I, in reality, you don't want people hanging around a DC fast charger once the car is more than 80 or 85% charged. They should move on and allow somebody else to plug in. All right, well, I am hopeful. So those of you who had to put up your firstborn on eBay to be able to travel around the country in your electric car can breathe a little bit easier and maybe put your listing on hold. Another car has been unveiled. It's electric, it's beautiful. And if there was ever a movie made about this car, Eddie Murphy won't be in it because it's not coming to America. Let me know in the comment section if you got that reference, but let's talk about the car. Weldmeister Maven is a beauty, as you can see, it claims to have a level four autonomy with this awesome retractable steering wheel. We'll see about the level four autonomy, but it will have 5G connectivity up to 500 mile NEDC range, which we know is kind of generous, but I'm not even gonna bother converting this for you because by the time it hits the production, it's probably gonna be something more conservative. It will hit the production in 2022. Now, Waldmeister is new, but a relatively established automaker selling over 15,000 electric cars in China last year, including the EX5 and EX6. Now, I understand you're probably a little bit annoyed with me because almost every week I flaunt a new electric car that's never coming to the United States. They're usually meant for China or Europe or both. Now, why is that? Well, let me replay you the answer that I got from Brian Gu, the president of Xpeng Motors, one of the automakers that have been making the electric cars in China and now moving to Europe about why the United States is the last destination for electric cars. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, there are a number of factors uh, why Chinese uh, market is attractive for EV. You know, for many years, I would say probably six, seven years already, Chinese government has been pushing really hard for the switch to a new energy vehicle. Uh, there's a lot of policies, uh, consumer and subsidy, uh, driving restrictions, emission standard increases, um, and all kinds of, uh, um, I think, uh, uh, you know, consumer behavior also related um, encouragements. All right. Well, for now, we'll just have to look at these beautiful cars on our screens, but I hope it will change in the near future. I want to give a quick shout out to all of my Patreons supporting this channel. If you want to become a part of my Patreon community, go to patreon.com slash e4electric. I also put that link in the description of this video. Looking forward to your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember, so stay charged.